winner of a New York State Emmy for Best Political Program. This is New York Now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to New York Now. I'm Matt Ryan. On paper, it seemed like a mismatch. George Pataki, a freshman state senator from the Hudson Valley, going up against Mario Cuomo, a man many people wanted to run for president just two years earlier. That was the choice the New Yorkers had for governor in 1994. Over the next half hour, we'll take you back to that David versus Goliath battle with the help of archival footage from the old PBS public affairs program Inside Albany and interviews with the key players, including George Pataki and Mario Cuomo's oldest son, Andrew. We now have a new project. We want you to nip and fix the new curtains for the Common Council chambers. <laughs> Nora has agreed to do that. Oh, no. <laughs> We had a lot of footage of uh, George Pataki from uh, before he, when he was mayor of Peekskill. One of his aides, the secretary, said he's going to be he's going to be governor. We're talking back in the era of fax machines, and this would probably be the early 1990s. And I kept getting faxes from this obscure assemblyman, a Republican minority party assemblyman from Westchester. And I would get faxes. It seemed like several times a week of all kinds of you know, little things that he did, and I thought, who is this guy, George Pataki? This budget shifts a great deal of the burden to the local governments and the school districts. We covered his campaigns as for the Assembly and the Senate, and um, so we were there at the beginning with Pataki. He was the perfect candidate, I think, for the time uh, where Cuomo was going against, I think, a lot of people's uh, better judgment for a fourth term. I can remember going to a uh, dedication uh, down in Corning uh, or, or meeting some executives down in Corning who told me of the prior couple of years, Mario Cuomo made a first appearance down at Corning when they were expanding in New York State. And he proceeded to basically lecture them that they weren't doing enough for the upstate economy. And their unanimous reaction afterwards is that they would not invest another nickel in this state as long as that man was governor. There weren't a lot of people who wanted him to run for re-election, were there in 94? No, there were not. I do know that, um, that there were a few of us who thought he shouldn't run again. There were people who were telling him, look, the polls aren't that good. Uh, numbers are not that good. You could lose. But um, I think he felt he had more to, you know, there was more to do. About a month ago, a Newsday editorial writer uh, wrote that a fourth term would be hard to justify. They said that when you hear the governor talk of uh, Medicaid pickup, a new fairer school aid formula, uh, a new New York, um, after 11 years, you're wondering, why are these proposals and not accomplishments? Well, they're right. That's because we had other accomplishments. For example, what we pick an area. Those I'll are show pretty you. big ones. The, the, uh, I, I just wonder, an area. would somebody newer with a fresh approach, fresh ideas be better at if, this point for the state of New York? If they have better ideas than mine, yes. I'll give you the plan for the future. You show me a better one. People hadn't seen any real improvement. That was the issue. They had not seen improvement. And as a result of that, uh, you know, he'd been there for, you know, a long time and, and he made promises and, and, and I think people thought he maybe worked hard at it, but it just hadn't happened. I'll tell you very simply, New York State was the most violent state in America. We had the highest rate of violent complaint, uh, crime of any of the 50 states. We had the highest rate of welfare dependency, one in 11 of every single resident of the state. And we had the highest tax burden, and we were last in private sector jobs. And by the way, we had the lowest credit rating in America. So it was pretty clear to me that, you know, for all the rhetoric and for all the coziness between so many of the Republicans in power and Governor Cuomo, uh, the public wasn't buying it, and they wanted change. and would be willing to listen to someone who articulated a different vision for the future. The time for talk is past. The time for action and change is here. And that is why Mario Cuomo must go. There's an old axiom in politics that you can't beat somebody with nobody. But like every axiom, there's always an exception. So the exception to that rule was George Pataki. He was a nobody, 
former part-time mayor of uh, Peekskill, a freshman U uh, state senator. I mean, that was about it. This week on Inside Albany, George Pataki wins. He's the first Republican to be elected governor in 24 years. After 20 years in government, Mario Cuomo prepares to exit the Albany stage. In a spectacular upset, a little-known state senator from Putnam County, George Pataki, toppled one of the biggest names in national politics, a man who was considered for the presidency. Tonight, we won a victory for all New York. Thank you so much. You know, I don't pat myself in the back and say, oh, what a great candidate it was. Uh, it was 1994, and that helped. Uh, but on the other hand, I think we ran, our whole team ran a great race. We had really good issues, uh, and, and I think laid out an agenda that the overwhelming majority of New Yorkers believed in. I've surely made mistakes as governor, but I'm as proud as I can be of what we have accomplished together. It was truly like a wake like someone very dear to you had died. I remember sobbing on people's shoulders. My father was a very competitive guy. For him to lose and walk around as a loser was very hard. The Cuomos were shell-shocked when they lost. They did not want to leave the mansion. They dragged their feet. I heard the Patakis were practically waiting in the driveway with their moving vans, and, and the Cuomos were, you know, holding on to the front door with their, with their clenched fingers. 